with the back upholsterers. So I made progress on getting most of these things dialed in. From the camera vantage point, you're looking at the front of the seat, and there are two options for terminating these corners. This one, um, traditionally you wouldn't ever want to look into where a fold is. So if we're looking at the front of the seat, I've wrapped this fold around to the side. So you can see this. I've tried to cinch this in and get rid of any folds or creases except for this one here. And there's a little bit of buildup, but by trimming off this excess, this lays much flatter. So that's that front corner. The back corner, arguably a tidier look. This is that butterfly thing we were talking about, which we did on the muslin stage. But uh, basically two folds here and here, and then it's a bit more universal that way. Uh, I'll show you how to do both. Now, this is just for the benefit of the camera. I would typically always want to have my eyes right on top of this, so I'd flip it around, but I want you to see what this is all about. So first things first, uh, I haven't backed myself into a corner. I've laid, left lots of room over here for no staples, and that will allow me to come in and kind of tweak and shape this a little bit more, whereas if I'm overcommitted to tacking this one side in, then I'm really kind of locked in, and then I have to start backing out pins and staples and all kinds of nasty stuff. All right, so I want to get this fold as close as I can to that corner. Not necessarily needing them to touch, but the closer they are, I feel like it's finer craftsmanship. All right, yeah, we can leave it at that. Okay, so now that I'm happy with the alignment, I want to start working with one layer at a time. So the center piece, then I'll wrap this piece back around. Oops. And then bringing these things back around to complete. And then I've got this last little section here. So that is butterfly corner. It's always going to be just a little pointy here, but for the most part, that's a decent shape. Okay, going back to the front corner again. With this, if this is the front of my seat, I need to tuck the side in first and then wrap this around. But I want to do it in such a way that I don't have a lot of material hanging out here. So tidying this up and also being mindful to shape this outside edge All right. that brings us to how this corner is going to fold and I'm kind of going to bring this back at an angle but in doing so it makes this nasty little bunch of material here that I need to deal with so if I go too far out and make this flat then this is kind of hanging out awkwardly and I can't fold this back without really starting to stack this material on top of itself. So I want to create a single crease or fold here. Tack that in that way and then I'm just going to kind of work back and flatten this out a couple of fingers. There we go. haven't said it before for this half inch staples are critical and then you'll notice how when I'm pinning these staples in they're mostly at an angle much stronger of a hold with those than it would be if they were to be uh, parallel to your framing or whatever but in essence we have the shaping of this done and it's got a little bit of give, but there's no looseness here. In other words, there's no place for the, uh, the cover to wrinkle as we're using this. So this is pretty good. Checking down the edges here just to make sure that there are no 
bumps. This one is a little bit unruly, so I still have another option to get rid of that. That looks better there. Okay, cool. So the last step is going to be to trim off any excess stuff that's going to be in the corners. Making sure to discard all of this onto your shop floor and not taking any of the time to throw this away properly. All right, let me see, how am I doing? Camera, yeah, that's good. All right, so the last step here is to cover up the bottom of this, this upholstery. Um, two reasons. One is that this is somewhat unsightly, and if this is on the bottom of your, your chair, and if moving this into wherever this is going to go, you would start to notice this, and it would just look unfinished. Um, and then historically, they did a lot of weird stuff with upholstery and so inside of this prior to the materials that we talked about today they would have all kinds of springs and twine and horsehair and stuff and over time with this seed doing what it's doing um, those would start to break down and then find little ways of falling out of the bottom and then just littering wherever this is resting at so again one is for aesthetic reasons second is um, historic um, preservation of the seat and being able to just cover all this up. All right, so the final thing we're doing here is a layer of cambric. This is just this black material. Again, all this is available at the fabric supply stores. And then something called a tack strip. Tack strip. It is just very thin cardboard material and easy to tear and to use. What I want to do to start is I'll extend this, overhang it, and then I want to put this out as close to this outside edge as I can within reason. And then just finding a straight line here. This tack strip will help to guide you for finding your line. So cambric down, then tack strip. What I'll do on the front is I'll fold this over onto itself, and then that creates a nice sharp line with no exposed fasteners. Don't really have that luxury on the back and on the sides, but it's rare that we need that. Typically, if it's going to be seen, it will be seen in the front only. Uh, if at all. Okay. My tack strip seems to have gone and got bunched up. Alright, so wrapping this stuff around itself. This is really not a terribly durable material. Uh, and I say that for two reasons. Number one is I can't puts a great deal of strain or pressure on this because it'll just pull loose. And then the other one is I don't need to get it very tight here as I'm compressing this into place. Just taut enough to get rid of any wrinkles. So at this point, I still have some wings of this material here. I'm just going to tear off any excess from that. That's about where I want you. Move around. Also trimming off any excess of this material. Uh, maybe 
this is a little bit more than two inches extra that I need. And as I said, this this is pretty weak stuff, but you really want something that will not inhibit the air passage of this stuff coming through. So this holds material in place without compromising or getting weird with slowing down the, the air movement. That was pretty good. I like tucking the stuff in. I don't know if that's the right way to do it or not, but by tucking it in, it, it protects it, it wraps it, also makes it really tricky to come loose. line. You'll notice that the position that I've chosen to pin this stuff in awfully close to the outside edge. So if you're looking at this with your x-ray vision, I've started tacking in muslin here and then, I'm sorry, the batting here, muslin here, then your cover material a little bit closer to here. So there's still plenty of space and I'm kind of working this material through and around so that we're not overlapping much. last edge here and then we are officially done. I'm not entirely sure what happened to my tack strip roll here. It got tangled, which is not the end of the world, however. Makes it tricky to have this stuff laying flat where I need it, as well as uh, not creating any kinks in this roll. And I want this to be relatively flat. Cool. Bottom, top, and you were ready. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I think it's really an enjoyable process once you get to it. It's um, it's a new set of skills, new level of patience, but for the most part, once you've done this, I think this opens up a lot more options for you in the furniture making world. All right, good luck. Let me know how it goes.